I picked up a hitchhiker because of his smile. I was headed south out of Eureka down Highway 101, and he was from Indiana. His name was Steve. He was a little older than me, and it had been his first time to Humboldt County. He'd come here via Redding, so I asked him, have you ever been close to a redwood tree? He said, uh, no, but these forests around here sure are beautiful. I felt my first glimmer of anticipation because where I was exiting in the freeway and where I would drop him off was the largest old growth redwood forest in the world at Humboldt Redwood State Park. Oh, and all humans of all sorts have long been charmed in their hearts by old growth redwoods. It's not just their sheer immensity, it's sometimes the serenity that one feels in their presence. Unfortunately, old growth lumber of many kinds, but especially redwood, draws a high street value. And the rush to cut them down in the early 1900s was the largest and fastest species decimation in history. By the 1920s, some Humboldt County residents, fearing that they would all be cut down, began a campaign to save some old growth groves in Humboldt County. Painters like Martella Cone Lane and others stepped up to raise money, and some groves were saved. But as the decades rolled on, and others wanted to save even more old growth groves, tactics had to evolve with the times, and I offer just a few examples of the many. In 1959, a man named Dan McClellan fashioned a home in the burned out hollow cavity of a living redwood tree, and he would climb to the rooftops to the treetops, excuse me, to fly the American flag. And you could see it from Highway 101. His mission was not only to preserve the grove, but to call attention to the world leaders that they should come and have the World Peace Summit here in the grove because of the peace that is felt here. Al alas, no world leaders came but the grove was preserved. Pacific Lumber Company sold it. However, in 1985, Pacific Lumber Company was grabbed in a corporate takeover by Charles Hurwitz and Max Sam. Hurwitz, thank you. <laughs> Hurwitz planned to log the remaining old growth forest as fast as he could, and he set up a horrific pace that damaged our already wounded watersheds and actually fueled a local controversy. So in 1990, a three-month-long series of actions and protests were organized about the old growth issue known as Redwood Summer, and it got national and international attention. But Hurwitz, through Pacific Lumber Company, kept on logging old growth. Some protesters moved into the active timber harvest plans and became forest defenders. And they tried to talk the loggers out of logging the old growth trees as they were doing it. And one day, a forest defender was killed by a tree as it hit the ground. His name was David Gypsy Chain. This was an era when all of Humboldt County was split between those who felt there was so little left that all old growth should be protected and those who felt that enough had been protected and locked up in parks. So meanwhile, in the Matoll watershed, the residents got together and worked with the Matoll Restoration Council to identify and document the remaining old growth stands in the watershed. What we discovered was less than 10% was left. This map became a catalyst for forest stand preservation, and within 20 years, over 50% of the identified stands in 1988 were blessed with permanent protection. Unfortunately, the largest 
stand was in the north, and it was owned by the Pacific Lumber Company, and they were no longer a willing seller. These were old-growth Douglas fir stands with their own unique set of qualities and important habitats. In 1998, the U.S. government wanted to save some old-growth forests, and they made a deal with Hurwitz called the Headwaters Deal. Hurwitz was able to sell some groves off at a superinflated price, set aside some others in return for a pass to log even more old growth. When plans were made to come out and log the old growth forest, the Douglas fir in the Matoll watershed, the forest defenders moved in to occupy, and the Matoll residents blockaded the gates that gave access to the timber harvest plans. Both the defenders and the residents were hauled off to jail as outlaws. Hurwitz was allowed to devastate our watersheds and forest lands, threatening all sorts of creatures in the web of life, taking incredible profits out of the county and into his pockets that further drove the Pacific Lumber Company into bankruptcy. Go figure. Fortunately, Humboldt Redwood Company was able to purchase the, comp pur purchase the property and manage it, and the first thing they did was announce no old growth tree of a certain age could be logged, and all old growth stands of a certain size were to be protected. And within a few years, 200 acres of old growth Douglas fir in the Matoll watershed was protected. But wait, this summer, forest defenders are out in the Matoll watershed now protesting the timber harvest plans that Humboldt Redwood Company had. Well, it turns out that many of the stands in these large timber harvest plans are mature, but they do not meet the company's definition of old growth. But, the forest defenders pointed out, these stands have never been entered there's never been any harvest here. We can tell by the absence of stumps. Humboldt Redwood Company decided to invite interested parties out into the field to discuss the matter. This was a game changer. This was completely different than other protests. We loaded up in vans at the company headquarters in Scotia and were driven out to the timber harvest units where we met the forest defenders who were already in the field. And then we walked out into the stands to look at the mark, the, the mark on the trees that, that was going to say that they would be logged. And in the unentered stands, the trees that were marked were very few and far between. And during our breaks, we would lay out on the forest floor and look at the stands and up at the spreading branches. And we definitely felt the undisturbed peaceful nature of the place. In fact, everyone agreed by the end of the trip that these unentered stands have the remarkable qualities of a primary forest. As a result, the president of Humboldt Redwood Company decided to consider increased protections for the primary forest stands in the Matoll watershed. Logging operations were halted. The next time we all got together was in October of this year, around a big redwood old growth slab. Humboldt Redwood Company staff, forest defenders, Matoll residents, and others, elbow to elbow, and each person got to express their ideas and concerns about these stands. And the interesting thing was we were all talking a very similar language. Restoration watershed integrity, forest stature, carbon sequestration. No promises were made, but a sincere conversation had occurred. Well, I could barely contain my excitement as I was exiting the freeway off Highway 101. My passenger, Indiana Steve, had never been close to a giant redwood, let alone an ancient grove. And conversation stopped as I pulled over, and he got out of the car, forgetting his backpack, and walked ten slow steps 
into his first ancient redwood grove. And he fell to his knees, and his arms shot up, and I could hear him say, Oh, my Lord! This was such an instant, transcendent moment. Maybe we should invite the world leaders here to feel the grace that is in our old growth groves. And maybe peace can spread from here. And maybe more conversations instead of confrontations can continue for what is really important for our planet, for our watersheds, for our forests, and for ourselves. Thank you so much. <laughs>